welcome to the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. There are no traffic jams along the Extra Mile when you're studying for your bar exam. And now, your host, Jackson Mummy, owner of the Celebration Bar Review. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 166 of the Extra Mile podcast for bar exam takers. This is your host, Jackson Mummy. Really glad to have you with us today. Know that there is a lot going on in the world. It is a crazy, mixed up, upside down uh, events as I'm recording today. Uh, and our hearts, our thoughts, our prayers are with people all around uh, this country, uh, whether it's in Nevada or it's in Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands or Florida or Texas. Oh my gosh, it's everywhere. It's just craziness. In any event, we're here to talk about the bar exam, and I know that for those of you waiting for results or those of you getting ready to take your tests in 2018, it's hard to keep a focus on all of those things with everything else going on around you. And so for a few minutes at least, I hope that uh, we can get your focus onto the bar and give you some information and uh, some inspiration and information that you can use. Now, our episode today is an interview that I did just recently with a successful New Hampshire bar taker. That's part of the uniform bar exam. And this uh, student, Alex Talcott, has a great story. Uh, he had three jobs, uh, twins uh, who are young, a whole lot of stuff going on in his life. And he sat for the, uh, the bar as a first time taker and he passed. And I'm really delighted to share his story with you. And that'll be coming along in just a couple of minutes. Now, if this is your first time on the podcast with us, welcome. We're really glad you're here. You can get these podcast episodes. They come out every Wednesday, and you can get them a couple of different ways. You can go to uh, Apple iTunes Radio or iHeartRadio and get the audio version, or you can watch the video version of each episode just by going to our website at celebrationbarreview.com forward slash 166 for today's episode. And uh, for about three months or so now, we've been doing video episodes, so all you have to do is put in the episode number uh, and you can find that. If you'd like to check out our archives, going back to episode number one, you can do that on our website at celebrationbarreview.com. Click on the link at the top of the page for podcasts and you'll see the show notes and all of the episodes. There's some great information over the years that we've done there. I also invite you to share these podcasts with friends, uh, colleagues, others who might be interested in the bar. We really appreciate that. It's how the podcast has grown so uh, dramatically over the past couple of years, almost entirely by word of mouth. So thank you for that. Now, if you're going to be taking the bar exam in 2018, I want to invite you to a special webinar. Uh, it'll be on Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern, that's 4 p.m. Pacific time. And we're also uh, running the same uh, webinar on Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. So two dates that you can check out our webinar titled, How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam. This is the powerful, proven way to pass the bar. We're going to look at the strategies that successful bar takers employ, show you how you can use them and how you can get started right now and moving towards making the next bar exam your last. Now, it's completely free to attend, however, you do need to register, and you can do that in one of a couple of ways. If you're here on the video page, just scroll down the page, you'll see the link, click on that, select the date that works for you, uh, and you're good to go. If you're uh, listening to this uh, podcast, just go to our website at celebrationbarreview.com. You'll see a button at the top of the page that says claim my free spot. Click there and you'll have your choice of Monday night or Thursday night at 7 p.m. Uh, to attend this webinar. But don't miss it. It's really powerful and it can make a huge difference for you. So I hope you'll join us for that. One other thing I want to let you know, another way to connect with us is that every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern, I'm doing a Facebook Live presentation on our Facebook page, so Celebration Bar Review on Facebook.com. And uh, in these Facebook Live presentations, I'm sharing a message and interacting uh, with our uh, uh, fans and customers who are there, uh, so I hope you'll join me for that. If you uh, click like on our page, I'm told by people who know better than I, uh, that that means you'll get notified of the Facebook Live presentations. But our current schedule is every Saturday, 12 noon Eastern, so 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific, wake up with me. <laughs> what a thought, right? Uh, in any event, we've got some good information to share with you, and I hope you'll, you'll join us for that. Well, I want to jump into today's message. Uh, I do know that there are results starting to come out uh, in some other jurisdictions right now around the country. Uh, October is kind of a quiet month for, for results. 
Uh, we just got Connecticut results, had some great results there, and I'm going to be sharing an interview with a successful Connecticut bar taker with you in the very near future. Um, not a whole lot happens with results now until we get into the end of October and we have Texas and then we assume New York end of October, beginning of November. Still, there are uh, states releasing results uh, every week right now. We'll try and keep you informed as we hear about those. Our students are doing well across the board. We're particularly pleased with the UBE jurisdictions like New Hampshire uh, with students like Alex that uh, we're going to talk to. So let's jump into our interview with that successful first time bar taker uh, in New Hampshire, Alex Talcott. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Hanging Out with Successful Bar Exam Takers. And I guess it's the luck of the Irish. We have Alex Talcott with us today. And Alex, congratulations. Not only are you supporting a team that's probably doing better than my USC Trojans right now, but you passed the bar exam and got the word yesterday, correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, from an Amtrak train after uh, 25 hours of travel from New Hampshire to Boston, all the way out to South Bend, Indiana, uh, right before I got off the train, I, I logged in and got the good news. Oh, great. Well, this was the uh, uniform bar exam for New Hampshire, right? That's right. Okay, well, congratulations. That's awesome news. It's a great way to get it on a game day weekend, and I can see you're ready for the game, and so we're not going to keep you real long uh, so that you can get out there. Uh, but I really wanted you to be able to share your story with our audience today. Um, and let's just start with you telling us a little bit about your background and how you came to be in a position to take the bar. Sure. Um, well, I went to college out in New Hampshire um, at Dartmouth, met my wife there, dragged her out to the Midwest uh, so I could go to Notre Dame, and she worked in Chicago, and uh, best work opportunities, graduating from law school in 2007, uh, were certainly in the Chicago market. I worked for a great firm there and took the July 2007 bar, uh, Illinois bar, that is, and uh, was successful with that. And um, actually, after I took that bar exam, uh, quote, Davy Crockett to my test takers and said, you all can go to hell, I'm going to Texas. And I hopped on a Amtrak train and it took a long post-bar exam celebratory trip in 2007. So it's, it's, it's kismet, it's coincidence that 10 years later, here I am when I get, when I get the news after uh, an Amtrak train ride. Um, I practiced law for several years in Illinois, uh, started teaching more at the secondary and college level. Um, I had twins in 2014, which definitely encouraged me to want to go back to the private sector. <laughs> um, and uh, I actually started a financial planning practice through Ameriprise at that time. Um, was very fortunate to have the company encouraging of continuing to teach law uh, part-time at the university level, but also to resume a formal legal practice and affiliation. And so that meant getting barred up again 10 years later. Um, and so uh, I went for it and uh, was super happy to be successful with it. I now have three kids, three and unders, and three jobs. So um, getting the bar exam done uh, had to be done, had to be done flexibly and, and, and intently, and that's what we accomplished with Celebration Bar Review. Wow, that's, that's phenomenal. And having twin sisters, I can appreciate the... <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing like twins. I, I just don't even know what to tell you. Um, that's awesome, though. So you're you're working all these jobs. It's been 10 years since you've taken the bar. What was it like to go back to studying? I mean, you've been teaching, so you've been in the academic world. What's it like to be on the other side of the, the desk there and, and studying? Yeah, it's, it's both um, an advantage and a disadvantage. It's an advantage because some of the key lingo is fresh in my head. I mean, of course, I didn't, and none of us forget duty, breach, causation, damages. Um, but beyond that, you know, that kind of second tier of legal vocabulary that you don't necessarily employ unless you're fully engaged in, in practice, studying, or teaching. Um, I had more at my tip um, as a teacher um, over these years. Um, and I also had a, a somewhat of an advantage because in the intervening period, I took the Series 7. Mm -hmm. I took the Series 66 for, you know, so I, I, I've taken yeah. standardized uh, tests over the years also. So that wasn't as big a deal. I would just say when it came to the to uh, some essays or not overthinking multiple choice questions, um, that was something that was kind of tricky, where I had to almost go into that place that you encourage your students to go to, um, where we rely on our subconscious and not so much on remembering you know, the, the intimate details of, oh, how did I pull this off at the Daily Center in Chicago when I was a first or second year associate 
and I had to get this done as a matter of matter of civil procedure. That is less relevant than answering a, a multiple choice question level question about civil procedure or anything. So my my day to day practice experience over the years was not really relevant to this test at all. Yeah. Um, so I needed a, a real bar review. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Um, when you started your studies, how many hours a week would you say you were studying for the bar exam uh, this time around? As with everything, got off to a really good start. You know, the first few days and everything when all the enthusiasm was there, um, you know, within an hour of signing up for your course, um, I had emails and things to start doing and to start reading, and I really went with that momentum in the initial days. Um, as with everything, when you have a hard and fast deadline, um, getting ahead early on is really important. You just build in that flex time if and when life happens mm -hmm. um, over the months before the exact exam date. So those first few days, those, those first few weeks, I was pretty hot, I, I would say, in terms of the number of hours a day. And then certainly, as uh, work got busy, as kids got sick, as summer vacations came, um, I did have some days where it wasn't always more than 25 or 30 minutes. Yeah. It was okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when did you start studying for the July exam? I don't remember whether it was maybe March or April that I signed so, up for, so the, for okay. the... So in the spring. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, I signed up specifically for the MBE. The MBE was really important for me to sign up for and, and to own. Um, I felt like I had a personal cushion with essay writing. Um, writing's always been a strong point in an interest. I went to a college summer camp for writing after third grade, <laughs> you know, uh, on the train ride out here, I was writing a letter to the editor of a local newspaper. I love to write, so I felt like I would be Good. okay on essays, um, but but the MBE was where I was like, Jackson, take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Um, so, all right. Good. So you're working, you're being a dad, you've got all the things going on, and you're studying for the bar. Um where did you put in that bar study time? Was it like during the day? Was it at night, uh, weekends? How did you kind of insert that into your schedule? I think people are always curious about how that happens. It, it was it was inconsistent for me, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just I'm in a fortunate position where I make my own hours for work, which any business owner knows. Oh, when you make your own hours, that means you make an awful lot of them. Thus, us talking to one another on a Saturday morning. Uh, yeah. That's what that's what happens. Yeah. Um, so I have my own book of business as a financial planner. I, I schedule my own clients. I pick my own clients if they will have me. Um, I do have an affiliation with a law firm also. And um, same deal in terms of uh, being able to say yes and no and, and make certain time available for it. Um, and then even with my teaching schedule, in the past I've taught online. I'm currently teaching on campus. But again, on a semester to semester basis, I'm picking my days and my hours and everything. So I did not have a model week. Um, or anything like that. Um, I find the time, I make the most of my time. If something is down or something's not working out or I'm not feeling like doing this kind of work, the benefit of having three jobs is, oh, I can take a break from this job and just work on this job. And it feels like a, it, it, it's, it's the way we psych ourselves out sometimes. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, you used uh, our online course, but you also had printed books from us, right? I'm not sure I bought them. I think they were maybe sent to me by a mistake, right, but you guys yeah. were nice enough to be like, you know what? You know what? Let's not nickel and dime the guy. Keep them. Good luck. Okay. So uh, I, I got them fortuitously, I believe. Okay. And and did you did you use the printed books or did you use the online version? I brought some of the printed books with me mm -hmm. um, on vacation to kind of uh, give my eyes a, a screen break or something. Mm -hmm. If I knew I was going to be on a beach and I didn't want the glare and I wanted to cuddle up with it a little bit, um, that was that was good in terms of making me feel like I was being productive and I wasn't taking a full vacation. Um, but, but frankly, that was not the most efficient reading and studying that I did. I found that the online PDF versions were better yeah. because just in the natural way that we look at, see what I'm doing, scrolling down, scroll down, that encourages the level of uh, skimming and or photo reading that you encourage. Um, so it kind of forces you through the material at less of a deliberate clip. So I actually thought that the on-screen reading was more efficient for me. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. Um, I like it when people are using the on online version and, and being able to scroll through. Um, what about question practice? How much question practice did you do uh, as you were preparing? I knew that that would be an area where I needed to force some accountability upon myself, left to my own devices, even having had success in, in past exams. Um, I tend to do less question practice than, than other students or other curriculum encourages. 
sometimes I don't even want to face the accountability of getting questions wrong. So there have been times where I rescored things and almost use it as a reading exercise to read the question, read the right answer and everything. So, so I haven't been as good with that. This time through, I probably did more questions um, than I have in the past because um, I was that serious about getting the job done. Um, I would say that one of the things that really, the number one thing that brought me to buying the course was the video lectures and the extent of them, the hour, the sheer hours of them. Because I knew no matter what, no matter how tired I was from other jobs or whatever, I knew I'd be able to get through that number of hours and kind of treat studying, if nothing else, as a binge watch. Um, I did follow through and do more than just the binge watch, but having that sheer number of hours of video lectures um, was the key thing that made me purchase the course. Cool. Um, that, that's awesome. I appreciate that. So you, you went through, you did all the study, uh, and now it's time for the bar exam. Uh, what was it like going back and taking the bar 10 years later? Um, it, it, my, my wife has a good sense of humor about it because she knows I've been teach I've been teaching front of classroom business law as my bread and butter course for six years now. And so I walk into these buildings to teach primarily undergraduates. I'm starting to teach some MBA students in the spring. Um, but I was definitely thinking of like a former Stanford Dean Kathleen Sullivan mm -hmm. who wrote my con law textbook yeah. in law school and had trouble with the California bar when yeah. she had to take it, when yeah. she sought to resume practice. So I definitely had a whole, oh, geez, don't be a hypocrite thing. Um, <laughs> you know, so, hey, so, no pressure. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I found myself thinking about the bar exam more when I was going into these buildings to teach knowing full well I was going to be on the test taker side. Um, so that was in the back of my mind a little bit. Um, but but getting um, getting in a, in a certain zone was really important. I would say it was maybe a little bit of a zone that I've gotten in um, for test taking in the past. In the past, I would listen to Bruce Springsteen, Born in the USA, as like a fire-up song. Mm -hmm. But at this point in my life, um, I, I'm definitely looking for that ohm a little bit more. <laughs> so um, while I did not do paraliminals per se, mm -hmm. I definitely did find myself over the past several months finding certain um, uh, delta wave relaxation music for deep sleep Good. or going to Ravi Shankar and other music yeah. that I find relaxing. Yeah. And, and that was a, a way to get my body, mind, and soul prepared. Yeah, we think that's really important that, that people come to the exam as as calm and focused as they can be and whatever tools help to to do that we offer some like uh the paraliminals uh so that's a good thing now you were part of uh some of our group coaching calls weren't you on the the facebook group i did yeah i joined several of them can you talk a little bit about what that that was like it was very yeah uh, along with the video lectures i would say that was the next thing that made me hire celebration um uh, the sense of community the sense of one-on-one of -on -one real people conversation sort of a thing as a very hands-on financial planner in my professional life where I limit the number of clients I have because I want to do very high-touch customer service, sit on the same side of the table, whether it's virtual or, or in person. Um, I really value coaching and mentoring very much. And um, I think for those people who are listening to this who are aspiring entrepreneurs or might be hanging out their own law shingle, um, you should not shy away from clients who themselves are professionals who are lawyers themselves, because if the best ones won't say, oh, I don't need you because I'm a professional, I'm educated. No, they'll say, I understand what expertise is. Um, I enjoy outsourcing parts of my life where I need help. I like hiring professionals. And so for me, the opportunity to interact one-on-one -on -one and in small groups with professionals like yourself and Kelly is a really big deal, and I see the value in it. So as somebody who sells it, I buy it. Yeah, yeah. And, and Kelly told me, you know, what a, a, a great contributor you were in the group coaching calls. And she really, she was really excited, by the way, when I told her that you had passed. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't know, we do these group coaching calls for our registered students. And it's an opportunity for some accountability and motivation and just getting together and kind of where are you and what's happening, how your, how your studies are going. And um, uh, we really like that. We get a lot of great feedback about that that feature in, in the course. So I'm glad you were able to take advantage of that. I'm sure that your uh, experience as a teacher helps a lot there in, in coming into that setting. And for those and for those uh, bar test takers who are not natural networkers or um, are maybe a little bit rusty and have, having conversations with real life lawyers yeah. um, after law school, especially if it's been a while, I think no bad can come from 30 minutes or an hour with uh, a barred attorney. 
Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I think it's a it's a it's a natural networking. And one of the things we love about our Facebook group is that our passing students uh, stay in the group and they hang out and they offer support and suggestions and again more networking. So I hope that you'll you'll be one of those folks that hangs out there and and uh, yeah. I'm a big I'm a big cheerleader. You know, I really wish the best for everybody. That's great. Well, I I think it's wonderful news to hear getting off the train that you've passed. I'm sure your family was thrilled. Your wife had to be thrilled uh, that that. that Well, well, because she knew knew especially that I was actually going straight from the train station to campus to give a lecture. So Uh I I got off the train to to give a joint lecture hosted by the Business Law Forum in the Career Development Office. Okay. So I felt all the more comfortable and confident at... uh, (laughs) <laughs> some of the wisdom I was imparting. <laughs> right. So you start by saying, by the way, I just passed the bar. Uh, it's always nice. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I, I really appreciate you you sharing your story. I think that for a lot of people, it's really encouraging to know that it can be done. And even when there's a lot going on in somebody's life, that this is manageable and, and that our course is structured to be flexible. Is there any advice you would give people who are considering uh, what to do now in terms of their studies or, or where to find a course? I mean, you've done a lot of different courses, a lot of different circumstances over the years. Uh, what's your what's your recommendation to folks? I know that you're such a big sports fan like me, and I think that you would take a real sports psychology approach to getting people yeah. um, ready for exam days. Yeah. And so sometimes that really just means flipping it uh, when it comes to adversity. So when you say I'm an example of somebody who was successful even though I had all this stuff going on, mm-hmm. I flip it and say I was successful because I had all this stuff going on. Um, my, my, my goals uh, were staring me right in the face. Yeah. Um, my, my children need to be fed. My wood stove <laughs> needs to be fed. So um, I, I had no trouble with that. And, and being busy forced uh, a certain amount of work ethic and organization upon myself. So you can lean into adversity. Yeah, that's fabulous. I, I think that's absolutely true. And uh, yeah, I, I'm just excited for you. Pleased for you. This seems like another uh, notch on the step uh, You know that you're headed uh, so that's exciting. It's going to be fun to see where you go with all of this and, and the things that you do. Um, and I, I have to say, you know, I'd be I'd be talking a lot more smack talk this morning if, if USC had won last night, but I'm feeling a little humbled today. So I'm just going to be quiet and say that, that I know there's nothing like game day. There's nothing as much fun as being on campus for game days, uh, yeah. these, these big games. And, you know, taking the bar for a lot of people is like game day. It's, it's going out there and it's having that moment. And then you know, you give it everything you've got and then it's done and you, you move on and, and, and keep going with your life. And I'm just so glad that for you, uh, this has turned out to be a, a positive uh, experience with the bar and, and we're thrilled that you were part of our course. Um, just just excited that you're here. Uh, thanks for sharing your story. Any, any other comments, anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up today? Uh, I would say listen to Jackson on uh, his informed opinions about the proportion of questions on the MBE that will come from from different areas. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I know you, you poked a lot of fun at, at big boxes and, and, mor- and mortgages in the property realm or whatever. Yeah. Really, really, you know, follow Jackson's lead. Your, your, your time is a precious commodity. For me, it was important, even in an area of great strength, and I know you're very interested in con law, that, that's, that's my best subject area. But being reminded that wow, there is an awful lot on rights. Um, even 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 though the first uh, ten amendments to the Constitution are just that amendments, mm-hmm. and uh, I read it for the articles. Um, no man, you need to go there with those uh, first ten amendments. Uh, that makes up, in my opinion, too much of the exam. I actually think a disproportionate amount of constitutional law is on that area. Not that I don't like civil liberties, but um, that is an area that that is overemphasized in comparison to the amount of text of the document. And so knowing that uh, encouraged me to bone up on uh, on the Bill of Rights and, and in individual rights. And that, that was helpful. And everybody else in those different subject areas should listen to you. How much is on negligence? How much is on this and that? And if you can model y- your study time accordingly, that's probably uh, a good decision. Yeah, I think that's good advice. I, I'm always glad when people talk about that. I know that the, uh, the rumor is always there's Millions of mortgages questions. <laughs> it's like, no, there isn't. <laughs> but okay. yeah, July 2017, there might have been one or two. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, so, I mean, people kind of walk, walk themselves into that expectation. So there you go. Well, listen, congratulations again. Uh, and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the game. Uh, thanks for sharing your time and your expertise and your insights with our students today. And for all of you in the audience, we appreciate so much that you uh, check out these videos and, and interviews. And uh, we we'll look forward to sharing more with you as more results start coming in uh, after these July 2017 exams. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Well, that's our interview and our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Alex as much as I did. He's quite a guy, isn't he? Now, I just want to remind you quickly that we will be uh, offering our free webinar, How to Make the Next Bar Exam Your Last Bar Exam, uh, this Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern and Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So that's 4 p.m. Pacific both times. All you have to do is go to our website, uh, click on the button to claim your spot, choose the date that works best for you, and then we'll see you for a webinar that will show you the powerful proven way to pass. And I don't want you to miss out on that. So make sure you check that out. And we'll see you Saturday on Facebook for Celebration Bar Review at 12 noon Eastern for our Facebook Live. Hope everybody has a really great week. Uh, thoughts and prayers with all of you who are dealing with the aftermath of storms and uh, natural disasters, and now as I'm recording today, man-made disasters. Uh, so uh, really our hearts go out to everybody that's impacted by all of the things that are going on right now. I know it's hard to think about the bar exam in a world that seems to be completely mad, um, and I, I hope everybody recognizes that uh, there's a bigger world out there and how important it is for you to get in the game and to be a part of uh, the, the rule of law and the importance of law in the world that we're living in. So uh, that's my editorial comment, but uh, really just uh, want all of you to have the best opportunity possible. Pass your bar, get out there and be great lawyers. We need more of you uh, in, this, uh, in this world. Hey, everybody, have a great week. We'll talk to you next week uh, on our next episode. Bye-bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Extra Mile Podcast for Bar Exam Takers at www.celebrationbarreview.com.